Oh, oh, wow. Nope, I can't do it one handed. Yes, I can. Cheese deli. <laughs> I missed a bit. I still sound sick, don't I? She'll be right, you'll find. <laughs> nope, that's not even what it's called. No. Hi, crafty people. Today I have this very damaged, broken doll pram that I'm going to show you how I remake a seat so that my kids are actually able to use it. We have two of these prams at home and both of them have a broken seat like this. I don't think the fabric is particularly well made in order to withstand using these in play. And not only are the ones that we have, but I go to a lot of people's houses who have these prams and they've constantly got holes or problems. So today I'm going to show you how I make a new cover for this, how I fix the problems with them falling off, and how I also make it easier for a child to strap their little dolly in without them having to try and work out these buckles. All three of my children really love to play with prams like this to put their dollies or their teddies in. So I know they're going to love it when I have remade this. If you've never met me before then, hi, my name's Marie and this channel is all about motivating mums to make and to mend in this case. If you also have a doll pram like this that you're looking to fix, then I hope this video gives you all the tips and tools you need in order to fix the pram at your house too. If you'd like access to the pattern pieces that I use in order to recover this, then check the description box down below. I'll have a link to my Google Drive where you can just download it for free. It's not going to have instructions written out, it's not going to be a digitized pattern, it's just going to be a scanned copy of the the pattern pieces that I've used here. So if you would like to also make this pram, have a look down there and you can uh, download those pieces and print them out for yourself. One of the main reasons that these prams seem to fall apart is the fabric choice. It's just very flimsy fabric. So I have with me here this very lovely patterned apron that I have. It's from Ikea and I honestly don't use it as an apron because I'm messy enough that an apron that just goes around your waist is not getting the part that's actually going to get messy when I'm cooking. So I don't actually use this apron, I use like a full apron. Um, so I've had this sitting around and it's so beautiful that um, I'm really excited that I'll be able to use this in order to make a pram cover and then the kids will be able to have this fabric on their pram. I think it's really pretty. And more importantly, it's also a really thick sort of canvasy material. So it's going to be really strong and sturdy in order to make the pram cover. Also, a little bonus for me, because I'm using this apron, it already has these ties here, which I know I'm going to be able to use as the waist straps and the straps to attach the pram onto the actual metal structure. So using this lovely floral fabric from this apron and the straps that are attached to it, I'm going to be recovering this pram. So let's get making. My mum mends the doll pram. As I've already mentioned, we actually have two of these prams at our house and I've already deconstructed this one last night so that I could take off the pieces and pattern them out. There are three main problems with these prams that I'm going to fix in the design I'm sharing with you today. The first is that the fabric is just very weak around these points here where the seat is attached to these metal bars. The second problem is that even when the fabric doesn't have holes and it's in the correct spot, it constantly falls off here because it's just held together with a little pocket. So I need to secure it at the back here. So I found a way to attach the back of the pram to this bar here so that it's not falling off at the front, meaning you don't have to continually keep putting that pocket back on these bars. And the third main problem that I'm going to fix with the design I'm sharing with you today is about these buckles and this strap here. Kids just can't function these tiny little straps. It's just too fiddly and too complicated. So instead, I'm taking the whole buckle system away and they're going to have a strap there that they can easily put their dollies in and out without having to constantly ask me to fix this strap for them. So with those three problems in mind, I took off the cover and I have patterned out my pieces here. So I've just traced it around the pieces that I cut off the original pram and I've written down any of the information from the original pram to make it really easy to then replicate this on my fabric. So last night I did do that. I took these pattern pieces that I made and I have made a little mock-up version of what we're going to be doing today just to make sure I was doing it correctly before I then filmed it to share with you. So let's get started by cutting out all of our pattern pieces out of our apron fabric. I've spread out my apron and I'm going to cut out two back pieces, two seat pieces and just one of the pocket pieces. I'm also transferring all the markings onto the pattern pieces to show where I have to join the different uh, little straps and things so that I can more easily join the pattern pieces together afterwards. 
With this pocket piece, you need to hem this straight edge here, but I've just cut mine against the hemmed edge of my apron, so that worked well for me. But if you're making this at home, you'll need to hem this straight edge because that's the open side of the pocket. Those who've watched my videos before know I'm gonna cut it with pinking shears. So along with the pattern pieces that I have cut out, I also needed two 12 centimeter pieces of this cord. So I've harvested mine from my original pram lining. And I also needed two 10 centimeter pieces of elastic, two buttons. And now I'm going to cut out the waistband and the strap for between the dolly's legs. So I need a 32 centimeter piece for across the waist and a 12 centimeter piece for between the dolly's legs. And you'll need a 30 centimeter big cable tie like this as well. So these here are the things I need for the back of the pram liner. I have the back of the seat. I have the part where you sit on. I have the pocket for the back and I need two buttons. And the rest of the pieces are for the front. So I'm going to lay them aside for now. And the first thing I'm going to do is work on the back. So what I need to do first is take my two little buttons and attach them onto the back of the pram seat, just hand sew them on at the two points that I have written on my pattern. These buttons are so that I can attach the bottom of the seat to the actual metal bars so it doesn't keep falling off. So I'm going to sew them on and I'm also going to sew this pocket in place, just sewing around that bottom side, obviously leaving this side open so that it can act as a pocket. So I've done a zigzag stitch all the way around the bottom of this pocket in order to hold it onto the back of the seat here. So now that I have my pocket sewn on and the two buttons, this bottom part of my pram liner is all done. It's going to be the underside like this. And now I'm going to attach the back of it to it. So on the back piece here, I've marked where the center point is and I've marked the same on the center of this bottom part here. So I'm going to line them up together. And I've also marked on the bottom here where the edge is meant to meet. So I'm going to match up those points here. This is where the edge matches here match up the middle points and match up the edge and sew along that point so that I can attach this. So again I've sewed that together with a zigzag stitch right along the edge there and that will be the whole underside of the pram liner complete and then we'll move on to doing the top part of the pram liner. These here are all the pieces I have left so that I can construct the front of my pram liner. The cable tie is the very last thing to go in so I'm going to leave that aside for now. What I'm going to do next, is, uh, and actually these um, elastics I don't need yet either, what I'm going to do next is take these straps. These are going to be what attaches it to the top hooks of the pram. So I'm going to fold them in half and just run a straight stitch down the side so that they are thin like this on both of them. And these two straps here are going to be the waist and between the legs strap for the doll. So I'm going to stitch this one in here. So I'm going to unpick the seam of my strap here so that I can slide this inside and sew it together again, making sure that this is in the center of the waist strap. I don't expect you to be using the uh, cords off an apron like I've done here. So if you are looking for the dimensions that I've used, I'll leave them linked in the description box. You could just use a piece of fabric that goes over in both directions rather than cords like this or you could buy um, the same width cord from a shop, I'm sure. So I'll leave the dimensions linked in the description box if you want to know how big this is, as well as how wide these straps were as well. I'm going to sew the back piece to the base piece in the same way that I did to the underside of this liner. I'm going to match up the side notches and the middle notch and sew along that part with a zigzag stitch. The front of the pram liner is joined together now and we're going to attach all of these extra little bits onto this, just tacking them in place with a zigzag stitch before we then sew the front and back together. So I have my piece of elastic here and I'm going to fold it in half so that the two raw edges are together and it creates a loop. And I'm going to attach it on the side here so that the two raw edges are against the edge of my fabric and then the loop is pointing inwards on my liner. And I'm going to do the same on the other side. So my elastic loops are just there. Next I'm going to attach the parts that hook onto the top of the pram. So I'm going to again same thing, fold them in half to create a loop. And then with the raw edge, which is super raw, they're fraying like crazy, I'm going to attach them here on a diagonal like this so that they're facing in towards the pram. 
And lastly, I'm going to add this waistband. Now, I'm only going to sew one side of the waistband and the bottom of the waistband, but I'm not going to sew this side because I'm going to be threading our cable tie through at the very end. So I'm not doing the cable tie yet, and I'm also not doing this one yet. So I'm going to just pin this one out of the way and pin these sides on. So now I'm going to do a zigzag stitch on all six of these points just to keep those in place and then I'm going to put the right sides together with the back and the front so that they're down like this and I'm going to sew around it leaving a gap here so that I can turn it in the right way and also making sure that the gap is here where I have marked that this other waistband strap is going to go. So I'm going to leave the gap on this side here. So firstly let's attach these with a zigzag stitch and then we'll go ahead and pin them right sides together with the back. So close. Look, I've got the front and the back all done. Just need to attach them to each other. It's done. But Ruben's awake, so I need to press it. I'm so close, buddy. Let's go breastfeed, shall we? So I'm starting by lining up where the seams are and pinning there. I'll do the same on the other side. And then I'll pin my way around the whole thing, again, sewing around it, leaving a gap so I can turn it in the other way. So sewing the whole way around it using another zigzag stitch, but it's going to be one centimeter in with the one centimeter seam allowance the whole way. And that way I know that I'm not going to be seeing any of my stitches from anywhere. And it will also be nice and secure. I've turned it out the right way through the hole and now I'm using a chopstick to just go in and push out all the corners. I probably should have chopped all the corners now that I'm thinking about it on that rounded edge. Let's see if it needs it. She'll be right, you'll find. So the last thing I have to do before I'm ready to install this on our pram is to finish this waistband and to close over the hole. So I have here my zip tie. I'm threading that along the top here and that's going to provide some structure so that when the doll's sitting in it, the band will sit up like this so that it won't be flopping all over them. I probably should put the bulky end down the other side just to make it easier to sew with. And then I can see this is where the end is. I'm going to be attaching that here in my seam allowance. So I'm going to find there is where I need to join it. And I'm going to place that in my seam allowance and pin it there. Now you don't want to be going over the cable tie with your sewing machine. So I'm going to be doing a zigzag stitch to hold this in place just on the edge here, as close to the edge of my cable tie as possible without going over it. And then I'm going to fold it under and hand sew up the hole just because I don't want to end up risking going over that cable tie. So as with all times when I'm closing over a hole like this, I'm doing a ladder stitch. So I'm going a little stitch on this close side to me and then parallel to that I'll do a little stitch on the side further away from me and then swap again. So we finished sewing up that hole there and our entire pram liner is now complete. So I'll show you how you install it onto your pram. So these two little hooks here are to go over the handles and the pocket underneath here goes onto these two bars. This is how the original design looked with it just kind of hooked on these metal parts at the bottom here. But we have added the buttons and the piece of elastic to help it be more secure so it doesn't keep falling off. So you're going to get your piece of elastic and you're going to wrap it around this bottom bar and then you're going to put the button through this loop in the elastic so that it holds it in place. And that way we can't pull this off because the elastic is holding it against this bar here. So again, I'm going to push the elastic down around the bottom bar here and put the button like this. Can we see it? So it looks like this on the underside with the button here on the bottom and the elastic pulling down 
to meet the button there and that prevents it from pulling off. So there we are, the pram is all finished now. It's attached nice and securely so it's not going to fall off. The fabric is thick so I don't think it's going to push through on those metal bars. And with the addition of that cable tie in here, this has enough structure so that you can put the doll in and out without having to adjust the strap all the time and having to put that buckle on and off. So I am happy with this design. I think it looks great. But now I'll show you some footage of what my kids think of this pram. So there you have it. That is the completed before and after for this doll pram. I'm so happy with how it looks. I think it's so pretty and so much more functional. If you have a go at making a pram cover like this at home, I'd love to see a photo of it. Tag me on Instagram at mymummakes.marie and don't forget to follow me over there as well to see what I'm up to during the week. If you have liked this video, don't forget to press the like button down below and subscribe to see some of my future content. Next to the subscribe button, there's also a little bell icon and if you click that, you'll get notified when my videos go live so that you never miss one of my uploads. Don't forget that if you are interested in recovering a doll pram like this, I'll have the pattern pieces linked in the description box. Thanks for joining me for this video and until next time, go get creative and I'll see you later.